esteemed rector, dear Michael, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it is of great honor for me to have been invited to the opening of the new academic year of the University of Bonn. Although as president of the German Academic Exchange Service, all German universities, our member institutions that is, are and must be of equal value to me, it should not go unmentioned that the University of Bonn has a particular significance for the DAD. After the Second World War, it was the then rector of this university, Professor Theodor Klauser, who was asked by the British High Commander and the German Conference of Ministers of Education in 1949 to re-establish the DAD. In point of fact, in 1950, 70 years ago, the DAD was reopened here at the University of Bonn with Theodor Klauser as chair of the executive board and president. Today, our headquarters are still in Bonn and there remains a special link to this university as our academic home institution here in Bonn. That I obtained my own PhD degree and my own postdoctoral degree from the University of Bonn adds to the significance of this day to me. So thank you, Michael, for having me here with all of you today. The basic assumption underlying the perception of internationalization as a homogeneous and converging process is that internationalization is an integral part of the broader process of globalization. In this view, internationalization affects higher education and research in quite the same way as globalization affects societies in general. Both developments are supposed to proceed systematically and progressively towards more cooperation, more efficiency, and hopefully more profit, both intellectually and economically. However, the last decade has witnessed a gradual fading out of the affirmative discourse of science as a marketplace of fair competition, continuous improvement, excellence beyond borders, and achieving an added value for all. This is mostly due to major changes happening outside academia, many of them shedding doubt on the idea that the process of globalization equals the relentless pursuit of progress and perfection. The global financial crisis, political upheavals, the right, rise of right-wing parties and populist movements in a growing number of countries and even in core countries of the West, political decisions that endanger the academic freedom and other core values of the West, even in member states of the European Union, but also the increasing numbers of refugees and displaced persons worldwide, of conflicts and crises throughout the world, and finally, the all too obvious effects of climate change. All these developments are bound to question the optimistic view of an ever-growing harmonization and integration of the globalized world. All these trends are reason enough to reassess the forms and functions of the internationalization of higher education and research. However, in my remarks from the perspective of the world's biggest funding agency for academic mobility, the DAD, my point of departure is the current corona pandemic which also defines the specific regulations for our gathering here in the university's main lecture hall today. The pandemic taken by itself is not a game changer for the internationalization of higher education and research. It does not change the aforementioned trends and topics, but it accelerates some of the trends and developments. Allow me to introduce five observations in this context. First, the first corona year 2020, and I'm sure there are more corona years to come, has shown us how vulnerable international mobility is. The collapse of air traffic, the closing of borders even within the European Schengen area, the new social distancing etiquette, this all ties in with the pre-corona discussion about sustainable mobility and the carbon footprint of our academics and our academic institutions. Second, the past eight months have made it clear against this background 
that higher education and research can profit a lot from the use of digital and hybrid formats. Digitalization or digital transformation has been a buzzword in German educational debates for years. However, Corona has made it clear to everyone that the choice for higher education management and the international recruitment of students is go virtual or vanish. Third, the corona pandemic has brought to the fore that those countries whose political leadership listens to scientists and takes scientific evidence into account fare better than countries that don't. In Germany, for example, ever since the beginning of the pandemic, the leading experts, for example, in the National Academy of the Sciences, the Leopoldina, have exerted an enormous influence on the political decision-making processes, which meant that virologists and SARS experts like Christian Drosten, Henrik Streeck, and others were constantly being dragged into the public, asked to explain to the public what exponential growth actually means, why certain drastic measures had to be taken, and why every single citizen needed to change their behavioral patterns in daily life. Christian Drosten's podcast with 15 million followers is science communication at its best. In this context, corona may help us in academia to come to grips with the growing science skepticism of the past few years. Fourth, corona is a test for our libertarian Western system based on undeniable individual rights and the state of law which are the preconditions for the academic freedom we need for our higher education institutions and for our international partnerships. Here too, we see that Corona ties in with the rivalry between different political systems. Will we be able to manage the crisis as efficiently and successfully as some authoritarian systems? In her public statement on 18th of March, 2020, Chancellor Angela Merkel, in explaining the need for the first lockdown measures, emphasized that our system is based on shared information and the active participation of all citizens. Shared information and active participation. Geteiltes Wissen und Mitwirkung. This is a democratic and at the same time scientific approach. It is to be hoped that this approach will stand the test of Corona. Fifth, Corona as the first true global pandemic of modern times provides ample testimony to a basic, almost trivial fact. We all do live in the era of Anthropocene with humankind being a global community with a common destiny. Be it the pandemic and its impact or climate change and its dramatic effects, we can't escape the confines of our planet. And if we want to address the grand challenges of our time, we need global citizens, planetary thinking, and solidarity on a global scale. This is exactly what we in academia can and must contribute, educating global citizens, nurturing planetary thinking, and being a role model for solidarity on a global scale by promoting intercultural experience of our students and fostering international exchange between our scientists. In sum, the corona crisis highlights, along various lines of thought, the importance of science and research in general and of international higher education and collaboration between universities worldwide in particular. In Germany, this is captured by the concept of foreign science policy, Außenwissenschaftspolitik. The idea behind the concept of foreign science policy is that academic cooperation is an important cornerstone of the foreign relations of Germany at large, quite as much as cooperation in the field of culture and education, often labeled and abbreviated as AKBP, Auswärtige Kultur und Bildungspolitik. At the heart of foreign science policy lies the conviction that German universities and research organizations support German foreign policy through international exchange and collaboration in striving for a peaceful, sustainable, 
social, democratic, and economically successful society. At the same time, foreign science policy is expected to foster democracy, stability, and the freedom of study and research in our partner countries. A broad range of initiatives launched by the DAD, such as the German Centers for Research and Innovation around the world, our global centers of excellence in research and teaching, the German University in Cairo, the Turkish German University in Istanbul, and our SDG graduate schools, one of them also steered by the University of Bonn, provide best practice examples of the concept of foreign science policy. The shared key message of all these projects, as well as of all long-term institutional partnerships, also in the context of the newly established European University Alliances is, global challenges must be tackled by all stakeholders. Needless to say, it is this key message that has been emphasized by the corona pandemic. Against this background, I would like to sketch out five major trends that will characterize the internationalization of higher education and research in the years ahead in the 2020s. One, mobility will remain, patterns will change. In the wake of COVID-19, there has been a substantial backdrop in international mobility, both of students and researchers. However, it appears, and this is very fortunate from a viewpoint of a mobility agency like the DAD, that this is a temporary trend, which is likely to vanish if and when the pandemic disappears. All recent surveys, and the crisis has brought about an amazing number of them already, display very much the same result. A vast majority of students who intended to study abroad before the pandemic stuck to their plans despite the crisis. They either postponed their stay or changed destinations. Only a small percentage of students said they would happily accept to do an online course instead of their study abroad experience. There is thus no reason to believe that students and scholars will lose interest in going abroad in order to study, to conduct research, to meet new people, and to discover another culture. At the same time, it is to be expected that mobility patterns will change. For a couple of years already, there has been a clear trend towards more regional mobility, particularly towards emerging hubs in Asia. As new powerful academic systems appear on the market, students are tempted to reduce cost and culture shock by studying in a neighboring country instead of choosing a study destination in the US or in Europe. Therefore, in order to retain Germany's position among the top five international study destinations, a strategic shift towards new forms and formats of internationalization is crucial. One way to make the international experience available to many is to introduce the concept of internationalization at home into the internationalization portfolio of our universities much more forcefully, making more and more strategic use of the internationally diverse campus that all German universities offer. This approach is linked to the enormous digital leap universities have currently taken in the corona crisis. The localization and digitalization of international exchange and intercultural experience may also contribute to more equity and diversity in higher education. At the same time, our universities will be more visible internationally if they offer a substantial number of online courses and modules using some of the material as teasers for a study period in Germany. Two, COVID-19 is likely to disappear. Challenges will stay. COVID-19 will belong to the past one day. There is hope that medical treatment and vaccines will be available in the not too distant future. Other challenges remain and they need our attention now. The effects of climate change become more apparent every day. Political instability increases in individual countries at the European and international level, and societies are torn apart by internal tensions and external threats. Thus, it is important to define the role and responsibility of science 
in this new normal, the new normal being uncertainty. Science needs to assume global responsibility and contribute to development and peace. The contribution made by science to find solutions for global challenges has already been mentioned. At the same time, German higher education institutions and scientific organizations bear an important responsibility for strengthening civil societies in countries where access to information and civil rights are significantly restricted. Especially in politically tumultuous times, academic cooperation can create and retain platforms for the exchange of ideas and people and strengthen critical opinion. Finally, the role of universities is to help mitigate existing inequalities and injustices and establish productive structures at higher education institutions in emerging and developing countries. Three, a shift from individual mobility to collaboration. In the pre-corona world, mobility was regarded as the basic currency of international exchange. Going abroad seemed the number one option for students to develop their international profile and for researchers to work in teams with colleagues from other countries. What we witness currently is nothing less than a paradigm shift. While there is no denying of the intrinsic value of studying or doing research abroad, the corona crisis makes us understand that intense collaboration is what really is at the core of internationalization. Whether this collaboration is achieved via a stay abroad or other means of cooperation is merely a matter of the choice of methods and instruments. This is to say that collaboration is not necessarily linked to face-to-face -to -face exchange, but exists in and manifests itself in a range of forms. In the future, the basic unit of sustainable internationalization will no longer be physical mobility per se, but collaboration. Collaboration will draw on a mix of virtual collaboration, blended learning and physical mobility, with all formats aimed at establishing and supporting a long-term collaborative link between individual students and researchers and long-term networks of collaborative partners worldwide. Four, an ever-growing importance of institutional partnerships and networks. At the institutional level too, we will continue to see that universities will focus on strategic partnerships. That is, a more or less limited number of partner institutions worldwide with whom they develop long-term relations with various levels and dimensions of interaction and collaboration. Strategic partnerships will be characterized by a range of joint research activities, joint degree programs, a constant and intense exchange of researchers and students, drawing on the full range of physical, hybrid, and digital formats. Strategic partners will team up with other institutions and form sustainable networks. Ideally, the collaboration will become so intense that the institutional linkages become, to some extent, independent of individual relationships between individual scholars. I do think that the network of strategic partners of the University of Bonn, both at the European and at the intercontinental level, is an excellent example of this vision of partner institutions that share a solid base of trust and are committed to shared targets and joint projects. Five, acting in a multipolar world means out of the comfort zone. The conditions for international collaboration are becoming more complex. In a multipolar world, the rules for working together are no longer set by a few dominant Western countries. Whether we like it or not, we need to take into account the fact that our convictions and our values are not shared by everyone everywhere. Having said that, there is a growing number of countries that are attractive from an academic point of view, but less so when you look at their political systems and the role and function of universities in them. This means 
that we are no longer automatically in a position of strength, but need to negotiate the terms of collaboration a lot more than we used to. If we want to cooperate with partners who are not necessarily committed to our beliefs and standards, but are top performing on the scientific scale, we need to make up our minds as to what we are ready to accept and where to draw a line. But in principle, we have to be clear about the fact that there is no alternative to interacting and cooperating with a large number, if not to say all countries worldwide, if we want to address global challenges in global teams. COVID-19 or climate change are not stopped by borders. Thus, I would like to encourage all universities and research institutions not to remain in their comfort zone by working exclusively with partners in countries that share our values to the full extent. Cooperating with so-called difficult partner countries will become vital in the 2020s because these countries too are part of the community of the faith of humankind and play a role in forging our common destiny on planet Earth. Ladies and gentlemen, the DAD motto runs change by exchange, Wandel durch Austausch. In spite of all the developments and shifts in the internationalization of higher education and research and in the world around us, I firmly believe that this motto of ours holds eternal truth. If we want to shape and change the world, we need partners and friends around the world with whom we exchange ideas and people. Thank you very much for your attention.